My personal lens collection is actually quite big. I mean, I get the chance to play with a lot of different lenses for the L mount, and in doing so, it means I actually keep quite a lot of really nice lenses. But there's only really three lenses that I use on a regular basis. And when I mean regular basis, I mean these are the three lenses that always seem to be in my camera bag when I go out and shoot for clients. So in today's video, I just wanna talk about those three lenses and tell you exactly why they always seem to find themselves with me, no matter what I'm doing. So yeah, and maybe it might help you with your next purchase decision if you are just getting into the Elmont ecosystem. So let's just get straight into it, starting with the first lens, and that is the Sigma 28-70 uh, f2.8. Now, I've already made a dedicated video about this lens a while ago. Um, I just think it's a really, really good lens. Um, it's really lightweight compared to the 24-70 f2.8 from Sigma. It has pretty much the same optical quality in terms of sharpness and all that sort of stuff. Um, and of course, you do lose out on 4 millimeters on the wider side, but that doesn't really matter to me because it's so much smaller and um, it's also like maybe three quarters of the price, so it's a lot cheaper as well. Um, and yeah, this lens always comes out with me. I don't think I've done a shoot in the last year where this lens hasn't been in my bag. Um, it's a great all around lens. Of course, you can use it at any focal length between 28 and 70. Obviously not focal lengths that aren't within that because it's not. Sharpness is fantastic. And yeah, I just can't recommend this lens enough. Um, in fact, I'd say that if anyone is looking to sort of upgrade from the kit lens, this should be the one to get because yeah, it does everything that you need it to. Yeah, it's really useful. And then of course, if I need to get a little bit closer than the 70 millimeters, I always utilize the APS-C crop in the S5 II and the S5, um, but purely because I actually see it as a benefit for that case. So I can turn this 70 millimeter lens into, well, times that by 1.5, doing the maths and you get whatever it is. But yeah, so you can actually get a little bit closer than 70 millimeters when you do utilize your crop in the menu. So that's really nice. And then moving on to the second lens that I always use, and that is the Panasonic 18 millimeter f1.8. I know it's actually quite a weird one to bring with you everywhere you go, but this lens is so good for establishing shots, for getting anything where you need quite a wide field of view. Um, and to be honest, I actually prefer it to the 24 millimeter in quite a lot of ways. Um, it just gives you a bit more latitude, a bit more sort of scope for, you know, getting those really dramatic wide shots. Um, of course, 24 millimeter is sort of like your standard wide, and that's actually the lens that I always use for filming these YouTube videos. Um, and I really do like that lens. It's really nice. But I feel like the 80 millimeter just gives me a little bit more sort of freedom for flexibility, a little bit more scope, you know, and just a little bit more fun to play with, to be honest. So I normally bring this one out when I do need to get those establishing shots to start off the video with, or let's say, for example, I'm in quite a small space and I want to make it look a little bit bigger, then I'll slap this on the camera and then I'm good to go. So yeah, this lens is fantastic and um, I definitely think it's worth picking up. Um, if you don't have a sort of, you know, I will not really call it an ultra wide, I mean, it sort of is, but it's sort of in that sort of weird middle ground between ultra wide and standard wide. Um, so, yeah, I really like this one. And then the third and final lens is the 85mm f1.8 from Lumix. It's always really good to have a decent portrait lens. I mean, this lens is really, really good because it's very, very lightweight. Um, I'm really going through this phase currently, guys, where I like to be as lightweight as possible on my shoots. So I'm trying to make my whole setup really light. Um, and that's why these three lenses in sort of conjunction with each other work really well because they are very small, very compact with a very small footprint. And this 85mm f1.8 lens is really good for being able to sort of focus on the details, pick out, you know, like your subject and really, really differentiate them from the background, you know, just do some really, really nice detail shots. So this one is normally the lens I'd use if I did want to get any sort of glamour product shots or if I did want to do anything with a little bit more compression. And again, utilizing that APS-C crop, if we do the mass, 85 times one point, what is that? Let's, let's work that out now. No way. So 85 times 1.5 is 127.5 millimeters. So am I doing that maths right? Yeah, I am. So yeah, it's 127.5 millimeters when you use the APS-C mode inside your Lumix camera as well, which again, like I said, for the third time now, I use this a lot because essentially I have three lenses here. I've got the 18 millimeter, the 85 millimeter, and the 28 to 70 millimeter lenses, all very small, but essentially, even though, you know, two of them are primes, I can double these up as different focal lengths. So the 80 millimeter can be either an 18 or a 27. The 85 can be either an 85 or 127 
27.5 and then the 2870 sort of sits you know to be the sort of one size fits all sort of lens so believe it or not even though these lenses are sort of a weird bunching to put together they just seem to work for me and you know like I did say I do you know sometimes bring more lens than this but it's just these three always seem to end up with me on whatever shoot I'm on um, so yeah like I feel quite comfortable leaving the house just with these three lenses I feel like I can actually shoot whatever I actually need to get in terms of both photo and video um, you know of course f2.8 isn't the best for low light but it's still pretty decent and to be honest most of the time I'm shooting in pretty well at scenarios because I bring lighting with me I do also own the kit 20 to 60 kit lens from Lumix uh, that I got with the s5 too a fantastic lens and I do think that if anyone was looking to upgrade from their kit lens to something else then the one lens that I'd recommend in terms of versatility and just overall performance would definitely be the 2870 um, it is fantastic and it definitely would be a very good step up for anyone who has just got into the Elman ecosystem and wants to spend a little bit more on getting a sort of step up lens if you like from the kit lens um, so yeah I mean I do make a lot of lens reviews on this channel and like I did say I do have a lot of Elman glass I appreciate it all I love glass from Sigma from Lumix and even other third party brands as well um, so I do do a lot of testing of lenses on this channel so if that's your sort of thing and you like to sort of delve a bit more deeply into what the L1 has to offer in terms of lens selection then definitely check out my other videos thanks as always for watching and hopefully I shall see you in the next one